Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, Gary. I hope breakfast uh, has helped you keep awake and not put you to sleep. <laughs> Maybe this story will help. It's the story of Sean O'Hara, who used to uh, go to the pub every Wednesday, and he'd order three mugs of Guinness, and he'd sit at the table, he'd sip from one, then the other, and then the other. And the bartender wondered why, what a funny ritual of drinking here. So he went and said, why do you drink, order three at a time? Why don't you just order one, finish it, and go on to the next? He says, well, I'll tell you the story here. He said, I used to come together with my two brothers, Pat and Mike, every Wednesday, and we'd have a Guinness together. And Pat's now in Canada, and Mike's in Australia, but we promised each other that we'd continue this ritual. Oh, okay, well, that's interesting. So this continued every Wednesday until one Wednesday, Sean came in, did I say Pat? Did I call him Pat? Sean. Sean came in to uh, have his regular Guinness, but he only ordered two. And so uh, the bartender and uh, some of the patrons came over to him and said, uh, Sean, our condolences. Uh, did one of your brothers pass away? He says, no. Why do you ask? He says, well, you're only drinking two glasses of Guinness. He said, oh, no, they're fine. He said, this one's for Mike, this one's for Pat, and I gave up drinking for him. <laughs> Today's talk is on journaling and how to journal. So I thought, well, you know, my knowledge is limited, so I'd go to the internet and see what's there. And there are reams of materials, reams of, reams of teaching on journaling. So if what I don't cover in this half hour is sufficient, you can go uh, and check the internet as well because I was blown away by how much there is for Catholics and Christians, if you need any more information. But I was also struck by the fact that 90% of the presenters were women. So that leads me to ask you this question. How many of you journal? Okay, that answers our question. That proves, I guess, women are, are more inclined to journal than men. But maybe after today's talk, I can encourage more of you to journal. The more important question is, do you take time daily to pray? To be alone with God and give him your full attention? Hopefully for at least 15 minutes, that's a good beginning. Now, if you're struggling with prayer, you could uh, look in uh, Father Mark's book on the Disciple Notebook, the first chapter is on prayer. That might help you. God wants to grace you to pray. <coughs> Once your prayer time is established, then maybe you could consider journaling. My goal today is to encourage you to do so. But I've expanded the title of today's talk to journaling a way to hear from God. Now, there are many ways that the Lord speaks to us and reaches out to us. And I'm sure many of you can share experiences hearing that still small voice in different ways. From scripture, listening to a homily, at a retreat, in your prayer, maybe getting a word of wisdom from a, a buddy or from the priest or even your wife and giving you direction that way. But some of you might be saying, oh, God never speaks to me. Well, all I can say to that is he wants to, he desires to, Maybe you're on the wrong channel. <laughs> <laughs> OK, 
Okay, I'd like to share today the way the Father wants to communicate with us through journaling. And some of the scriptures that back this up, in Matthew it says, but when you pray, go to your inner room, close the door, and pray to your Father in secret. And the Father who sees in secret will repay you. So if you take time in prayer, the Lord will repay you. You'll be blessed with grace, with blessings, and you can be blessed with his word for you. Two other scriptures confirm this from the Gospel of John. It says, My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. And from Isaiah, Morning after morning, he wakens my ear to hear as disciples do. Of course, there's an important requirement for this to happen. You have to pray regularly and take time to listen, daily at best. Perhaps you can spare only 15 minutes. Well, that's a start. But maybe if you're going to journal effectively, you're going to need more time than that. Uh, yeah, we're going to look at the advantages of keeping a journal. So maybe we'll go back to one. Yeah, okay. All right. And uh, I'll, you can look at that, but I'll be going through these as well. Well, first of all, you need to get a book, and then you record in it date, time. It's like uh, keeping a record of your prayer, keeping a record of uh, the particular thing, day that this thing happened or whatever. Uh, one of the things you can do too is uh, because we tend to forget what we need to be praying for and so it's good to write down maybe prayer intentions and then leave a space with them in your journal so that you can write how they were answered. You know, and that gives you a, an attitude of gratitude, uh, seeing that the Lord does really answer your prayers. Also, uh, people uh, tend to, especially in the Christian community, tend to ask one another, well, oh, could you pray for my sister who's sick in the hospital, or pray for this intention or that? Well, when you get those requests, we often say, oh yeah, I'll pray, and then we forget them, but it's good if we write them down in our journal because that way we can remember them better. Maybe you have a favorite prayer uh, that you'd like to pray regularly. Well, you could cut it out, put it in your journal. I have a healing prayer that I use regularly, a healing prayer for other people, and uh, it's in my journal. <laughs> if you're reflecting on the scriptures or the daily mass readings, that uh, is where the Lord speaks to you. And you can write down something for that sticks in your mind or in your heart uh, that uh, is meaningful in your journal. Also a homily that, uh, you know, uh, I'm continually writing things in Father Mark and Father Ken's homilies that strike me that I can put in my journal. If you're like me, you need reminders. And so, uh, you know, if there's something coming up in ministry and something you're called to serve in the, in the, in the parish, <clears throat> it's a good idea to write it down, make sure you don't forget that particular uh, service that you're at. Or, you know, and I, I put there, tomorrow is wife's birthday. You don't want to forget that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, when you're traveling, you take your journal with you. And not only can you put the date and time, you can put the location. Uh, it's nice to have a record of, well, when was I over in, the, at, in Quebec, you know? And then you can say, oh, yes, here, it's written down in my journal. Uh, number eight, uh, it gives you a, a review, you know, of things happening, but also of what God's doing, what God's saying, uh, as if in a diary. It's a place to... When Lent comes along, we all set our goals, don't we? Usually to things that we want to improve on. 
or new habits to create, write them down in the journal. And then you can keep a check uh, after 40 days to see how you've done. Number nine, you know, uh, things are happening in our lives. There's, we have a little history. Every person and family has history. You want to write down some of those historic moments in your journal, like family celebrations, important things happening at church. Oh, there's some men's breakfast next month. I've got to put that down. And uh, births and deaths, you know, like uh, when you're my age, uh, there's always someone passing away that you want to remember and, uh, and write that down.